You are listening to Lady Red Live with You Are Not Your Talent, Season 1. So welcome to Lady Red Live. This is Kylie Fisher and I'm so glad that you found my podcast. Now personally, I've been in the entertainment industry for over 15 years and a creative my whole life. With this idea, you are not your talent, I ask my guests to look past what they do and really find out who they are. So thanks again for being here. Let's get started. Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to Lady Red Live with You Are Not Your Talent. And on the show today is a young and passionate performer. Uh, She's also a singer-songwriter and her name is, drumroll please, the one and only Jess Josie Lee. How are you going today? And girl, how many times have you been on social media today? Oh, too many. (laughs) That's all I've really done today. It's pretty sad. You woke up and straight on social media. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Last thing I did before I went to sleep. First thing I did when I woke up. Now, we can also hear your amazing accent And uh, so Jess Josie Lee comes all the way from good old England, the UK, and she's living in Sydney, Australia. So Jess, why don't you tell us a little bit about your career so far? That would be fantastic. Um, So I finished school at 18 and started busking straight away. Um, And I was going to take a gap year and then go to uni. Um, But I started busking and I was like really enjoying it and earning some pretty good money. So I was like, okay, I want to do this for the full year. Um, And then I realized that winter was on its way in England and I didn't want to be busking in winter. So I was like, okay, I'll go to where it's summer. So I came to Australia in, I think, around September 2017. Um, And then I started sort of full-time street performing and I did that for a year and it was awesome. I went back to England for a bit and I started gigging and then I was just full-time gigging for a while and then I came back here um, and kind of got a bit fed up with all the gigs and went back to street performing Um, and I've just been using busking as like a as a way of pushing my social media and pushing my stuff on Spotify which I found has actually been working better than the gigging was Um, so yeah that's uh that's my summary. (laughs) That's really cool that um, street performing for you is such a such a big part of getting more social media followers and also probably getting your own music out. Um, how did you, like, of course you said, you know, you finished school at 18. So like your, your younger years, were you around music? Have you always had a passion and kind of a drive and that's what you wanted to do? Yeah, I've literally, since I can remember, wanted to do music. Like my parents bought me a karaoke machine when I was like four years old and I'd sit them down in the lounge and be like I'm singing now everybody watch me (laughs) um and it's kind of just gone from there I did all the school plays when I was younger um and then I started writing songs when I was about seven years old and kind of just kept that going and then started performing a lot at like school events from the age of um about eight years old (laughs) and then kept that going and then um start did my first gig when I was 14 I think um and then yeah just sort of just kept it all going really cool when you moved to Australia I have to say 18 is like like I'm in my 30s now and if I look back at being 18 and moving internationally for music that you know that is such a massive leap of faith um you know did you feel like you were just gonna go and be lost or you kind of had a game plan I think because initially I wasn't planning on on it being a permanent thing. It wasn't too scary. I was just kind of like, oh, I'm just going to go for a few months and I'll come back. But then it just worked out really well. So I kind of just, I play everything a lot by ear. Um, And I do struggle with the bigger decisions, like whether to like stay here for a while or go back to England and all of that. But um, I think because I'm just taking things day by day, nothing's been too daunting in terms of like that kind of decision making. Um, What's the... What's the um? Let me get this out. I'm trying to think of it on the top of my head. You you just said like the your you you know you love street performing more than say gigging at a venue. What's the difference for you? Um. So okay, I think there's a few sort of disclaimers with this. So I think the gigs that I were doing were all very much like background music pub gigs. Um. And I think if I was doing more 
gig gigs where people were coming to see me sing it'd be a different story but uh, the gigs that I were doing were just like very much background music um but when I'm busking like everyone that listens to me has chosen to stop and listen to me like rather than being there to get a drink um so and I think also just this I'm exposed to so many more people that there's more opportunity to sort of connect with the people that my music really resonates with I think that's really cool. I love that you said um, when you're street performing, like when you're busking, it's people are stopping because they're choosing to listen to you. That's so true. Like, um, like you know that I run a music agency and I'm a performer as well. So yeah. I've always, you know, meant kind of a little bit struggled with that live music in our venues in Sydney is it's just kind of another part of the furniture. So, you know, I can go back 10 years ago and I was under – a 14 TV screens of different sports on a Friday night at prime time. And I remember saying to the, you know, I remember saying to the GM, why don't I play in the bistro where you've got your families and, oh, no, we don't want you in there. We want you in here. And it was it was one of those gigs where I went, I'm never going to play there again because, you know, you're not getting your fulfilment as an artist or as a performer, even though you're doing your covers you know, when no one claps because they're actually clapping at the screen because a team just scored a try, you know, like I would make it a, a joke and I'd be like, thank you, thank you, halfway through a song. Like when I <laughs> totally know it's about the sport. Um, when you went back to England and you said you were gigging um, when you went home, is there a, like, is there a massive difference between the England like the the UK scene for gigging compared to what you experienced here in Sydney um for me it was quite a different experience but I feel like maybe I I feel like it's not like a sort of fair comparison because maybe I'm slightly better connected in England than I am over here um and I I found the venues that I was doing in England I did prefer to the venues that would that I was doing over here but I think I think there's definitely equivalent venues over here, but I just didn't do it long enough to sort of get into those venues. But um, I do think, like, I wouldn't be really against going back to gigging, especially with all the corona stuff that's happening. Um, But I think I'd need to go about it a different way and get some different venues and maybe set up a duo because that was another thing. Like, I was just really sick of doing solo gigs and, like, traveling to all these places by myself. Um, But I think if I had a band or a duo, it'd be a different story. Yeah been there done that done it all totally agree having a duo is so much more fun you've got the hang um you can also you can you can always change up your songs because they can of course jump in and, and choose different songs as well yeah oh I tell you um one one big difference between one big difference between um here and England is the standard gig time in England is two hours Whilst over here, I found it's generally three hours, which I think is way too much. And like, I struggled with like the two hours, which seemed like a lot in England. Then I came over here and they're like, yep, three hours. And I'm like, oh my. (laughs) Yeah. And then in in Brisbane and Melbourne, it's a four hour set. So it's four sets. Um, And then most of your, yeah. And then most of your clubs and RSLs over here are usually four set gigs as well. So it's only like uh, a small percentage of your venues and your, you know, your bars who it's a three setter. Like I've done some venues on a Sunday afternoon and it's a four setter. And then you're just cringing because you're so exhausted from the whole weekend that you've just done. And then you got to finish on a four. It's just like, nah, this is not cool. But yeah, that's crazy. Two sets. Oh. Yeah. That's the other thing as well though. I think there's such, um, like with performing there's such a sort of exchange of energy and like when I'm busking I can go for four hours because I'm getting so much energy from the people that I'm performing to but when you're performing in like a half empty bar where people don't really care you're not really getting anything so keeping going for four hours when you're not really getting any any energy from the people in the room it's hard wow it's so true um, so, yeah, so in the past season, of course, this, the six to 12 months that we've just been through, um, let's say before COVID-19, how's that been for you? Have you had some um, good breakthroughs? Let's talk about that for a minute. Yeah, it was um, it was really going well. Um, I was working so hard. I was busking a lot, um, partly to get my name out there and partly to just save up money to then reinvest in my music. Um, and then through busking, I got some really good contacts that I met 
my producer um and I worked with a few few producers before him and it just wasn't quite clicking but finally I found this guy uh called Ben Stancombe and he is just incredible um and the reason I got that link was from busking and that's been a really really like helpful thing for me because now that I started working with him I've started getting a lot more streams on my Spotify um and before sort of in 2018 like the most streams I got on a song was I think 6,000 but that took like over a year and I was like pretty happy with that but I've got this new song out I've sort of totally redone uh my sort of image and sound and like sort of relaunched myself in December 2019 and the song that I put out then has already got I think like 85,000 streams um and I think that that is sort of the result of all the work I put in and how everything was going last year. That's really cool. And it's great how, you know, you can you can meet people along your journey and you, you want to see if it works or see if it feels right. But at the end of the day, it's all trial and error until you, you know, feel like it drops for, with, for someone and then it just clicks and it works. It's like a relationship, really. <laughs> yeah yeah for sure so like definitely a lot to be said for trial and error and like at points I've been kicking myself for like spending money on other producers where I've got all these songs that I'm not even going to release but I'm like it's all a process like I learned so much from working with those producers anyway and I don't know if I would have got to work with the producer that I'm working with now had I not gone through that process Mm. so yeah all trial and error man trial and error and massive growth as well for yourself personally um is your music on um all live streaming yeah it's on um every platform okay so jess can you remember a defining moment in the beginning of your career yeah i don't there's been like a few moments um i think there's definitely sort of my early teenage years there was a few where i would be doing a performance and just get such a buzz from it that i'm like oh my god i have to do this like this is what i want to do um like there was a I was a I was on a holiday my grandparents used to live in Greece and I was visiting them one summer and there was this open mic kind of competition going and I performed at that and that's definitely one of my sort of defining moments where I was like oh my gosh that was so awesome I want to do that I want to be a musician yeah (laughs) um I love the fact that you just said your grandparents just retired in like Greece because you know, when we go to retire over this side of the world, it's kind of it's like the central coast or you might be excited to like move to, to Fiji or something if you really like extreme. <laughs> but that's so cool. I, I love the Greek islands. They're like my jam. Oh, my gosh. I still want to do a summer in Ibiza. <laughs> yeah, I'll do it. Soon maybe in another season's time we'll see what yeah. happens <laughs> yeah it's gonna be a while <laughs> till, till these flights get going again hey oh I mate I really I really just you know want to hear on the news international flights are available because I will probably be out of here pretty quick but anyway that's that's the holding we're just gonna wait cool so um You know, was there a moment in time, or I know you're still young, so of course you've got a lot of years ahead of you, but have you felt like, um, you know, in in this season of moving to Australia and then being back home and coming back and all all of that, you know, in motion, has there ever been a moment where you felt like you're just going to call it quits and and decide to do something else? Um, I don't think there has been. Like, there's been tough days and there's been horrible gigs where like I've just not enjoyed them at all but like I think rather than being like I'm gonna call it quits I'm like okay I need to adjust what I'm doing here so that I do enjoy this cool I think yeah I think you've got a lot a long way to go as well so that that would be the journey but to be honest I've I've spoken to some people who haven't had any of those you know moments where they feel like calling it quits like for myself I thought that 30 was the cutoff time to be a performer like I had this mindset that if you don't make it by 30 you might as well hang the boots and so at 28 and 29 I had to really dig deep in myself and realize that that was a lie that I'd been telling myself for at least 15 years 
and that actually I had so much more to bring and so much more leverage being how much I've got behind me now. So it was a, I really had to wake up at that and, and, and you know, find out for myself that no, 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 no. Because <laughs> like in the last four years has been probably the most I've done in my career. So it's it's amazing how changing your mindset works, you know. Awesome. That's so good to hear because like, there's so much um there's so much sort of pressure and like like everyone makes such a huge thing of like age in the music industry and special especially with women but you're so right like you know like yeah no yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're wrong <laughs> and I love the fact that like with the say the cover scene for you um it's not about the money because you you still desire people to connect with you as an artist a lot of you know a lot of us are just gigging every weekend for the paycheck so some of us have that we don't care if there's no one there we still know we're getting paid but I think after this um COVID is over I think we'll always we'll all be really refreshed and be able to come back to the scene with a bit more you know fire in our bellies to perform again and hopefully that the punters will have that as well because they would have only been having us really on on you know Facebook lives and that's it yeah yeah for sure Jess how do you keep fresh and up to date and also with your songwriting how do you you know let's let's do quick two questions then how do you keep fresh and up to date and then I want to ask you um how how do you begin writing a song um so I'm always looking for new music um as I think most musicians are I just burn through all of my stuff on Spotify um so I've like constantly got like new favorite artists who are like inspiring me and I'll choose little parts of their sound to add to my sound and I think yeah just by just by following other musicians and taking snippets from different musicians I think that's how I do it and in terms of writing songs like I usually I always like all of my half decent songs I would say I've have started from me feeling pretty emotional um either happy or sad or angry um and I kind of vary it like sometimes um I'll just be doing whatever and a line will come into my head related to how I'm feeling but it will be like a rhyme or something and I'll just write it on a note on my phone um, and then come back to it or just then and there start finishing a song um, and then sometimes I'll just be jamming on the guitar and I'll find like a nice chord progression and kind of go from there um, and then I've recently started I've got a lot more into production recently um, and I'm starting to get a lot of inspiration just from like the odd sample and like I'll just take a like a snippet that's a little sample and try and sort of extrapolate a song from that um so yeah loads of different ways that's really cool have you looked into collaborating with other people uh to songwrite yeah I this is something I keep saying I'm gonna do and like I'll occasionally like message people and we'll talk about it but it just never seems to really happen but um there's a few people that we have said we're gonna do it um so I reckon once this whole COVID thing is over, maybe I'll start get get cracking on that then. And collaborations is a little bit like your producer or your engineer or your musicians in that fact because, um, you know, you can have some really great moments writing together um, and then some others just absolutely crash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll be interesting. I, like, I have no idea how it's going to go. I know that, like, working with my producer, he's just – works magic on my tracks um and that's yeah I guess like that's a collaboration so I I know there's definitely some good stuff that can can come out of it awesome this is great Jess um so another question for you you are still in that you know 20s of life is just right there and a little golden nugget but where you know where do you vision yourself in five years from now I really want my music to take off like I want to get a million streams by the end of next year and I want to be touring in maybe two years um I would love to be touring and like be able to fill venues with you know not like huge venues but just maybe even just like 200 people would be so awesome I just 
I love performing so much and I love having a crowd ready that to perform too or like even if I was just a warm-up act for someone touring just anything I just want to be performing to bigger crowds really cool really cool you could do um pre-show for people as well and that's a massive way to get get your name out there yeah I would love to well you know um you know tones and I story yeah she was you know busking in in Byron and then from that was you know was found that way so you're on the right track girl and and getting you know 80 85,000 streams on on you know your music platforms is incredible so keep going at that for sure um the next few questions are you know a little bit more intense and a little bit personal so you know right now while we're all in COVID-19 and we're not gigging and we're not performing it you know out and about um you know, how has is, how is this season been for you and how you're taking it? Like we know that you are away from home. So what is what has that journey been for you for the last two months? It's been it's been tough. It's been pretty stressful because obviously it's just having the rug ripped from under your feet. Um, and it's been hard, especially financially, because like I've just lost all my income overnight and I don't get any government support. So I'm kind of just living off my savings at the moment, which is so depressing because... I obviously worked really hard to get my savings and had plans of what I was going to do with them. And one of those things would be recording and investing in creating new music. So that's a bit of a setback. Um, But I've just been trying to use the time as well as possible. And so I've just been doing loads of production, uh, which is something that I've always wanted to put a lot of time towards, but I've never had the time to do it. So I'm kind of taking advantage of this time for that and writing and just trying to push all my social media and just kind of m- make the best of it. Also, it's 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 cool because your generation is that group that um, is actively learning things. You know how to do them yourselves. Like, um, you know, my generation, we were taught that you have to go to school for it, or you have to. Um, you know, say even recording in a studio, you'd have to hire a massive studio and have an engineer and everything is like product of using someone else. But it's really inspiring to see the next generation. You guys learn how to do all this stuff. You know, I keep getting told like just Google on YouTube or like, you know, search on YouTube and it'll tell you how to how it works. I'm like, what? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. So this next question is my favorite. Um, As you know, my whole series is about you are not your talent. So, you know, Jess Josie Lee is the artist and that's what you do. Um, But I want to ask that question, you know, who else is Jess Josie Lee without the artist? I don't know. (laughs) Nothing. Um, I I love sport. I've always done a lot of running and getting back into hockey which I took a bit of a break from I actually wanted to be a professional hockey player before I wanted to become a professional musician um and wow what else I love just chilling with my friends and traveling um so much it's 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 a great question because it's something that I do think about sometimes when when you do so much music when music is your profession I feel like it it's weird and like contradictory but you kind of associate yourself less with music because it's kind of like you're not trying to prove anything anymore it's just what you do um and then yeah it's it's interesting yeah well we, we when when you're an artist it's that it's that idea of um this this is what I do but it's such an identity because we're you know we're pretty much selling ourselves in every aspect of of being the art so you know um you're selling yourself on how you look and how you're portrayed and what you say and then how you perform and what you sing and what genre you're in so everything that we do is in these is is in these categories so it's it's that learning to strip away from that yeah um and then finding you know the the depth of who you are and what else excites you and you know what other desires you may have that you didn't even realize because you've always thought that you, you know, you are the artist. Being home in this season um, with, you know, being stuck at home, I was on a cruise ship and was literally on an emergency flight back from the States. 
I have been, you know, we have been forced into this situation, but it's been a blessing in disguise because it means I'm actually tapping into all those other things that I've always had a passion for, but pretty much just always put on the back burner because I'd always say yes to the next contract or the next gig. So it never really allowed me to have that time, you know, to invest a little bit more in myself. So you know, this, this time is a bit of a blessing in, in disguise, but yeah, I challenge you to let those, um, let those ideas dwell a little bit longer and see what you can, you know, see what you can find underneath it all. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I think I just, I put so much pressure on myself to like, just constantly be productive and be working towards, um, sort of my music goals. But yeah, I think there's a lot to be said as well for taking a step back and, being a human (laughs) yeah totally being a human that's so true let's take it back to when you moved to Australia you know young 18 you know how did you how did you did you come with your equipment from from England or did you you know hustle and grind to get set up like tell us a little bit about that yeah so I am I did two months busking in England before I came out here Uh, so I got some savings from that and then I have my little busker rolling cube, um, which is awesome. It really does the job and it's not too heavy. So that just fit in my suitcase and then just brought my guitar as hand luggage and then got here and I was pretty much just ready to go from the day I landed, which was awesome. Amazing. And you'd already organized, um, you know, where to, where to stay or did you have contacts here in Sydney? No, I didn't. Um, I... Like, so I did like a fair amount of research before I came over um, and I had a look on flatmates and I was like, oh, that's easy. Like I can find a flat. It's not too expensive. I can afford that. Um, And then I just booked a hostel for my first few nights whilst I looked at a few places, um, a few share houses. And then it was really awesome. Actually, I found um, on my third day in Australia I found the flat that I then stayed the whole year in and I was living with seven Brazilians and it was honestly that had the best time and they were all musicians wow um like the way I found the flat was that they had like five guitars on the wall in the picture and I was like okay that's where I'm living (laughs) that's really cool because I think it can be really daunting you know up 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 uprooting and moving across the world um and, and for some people, it doesn't go to plan. And, and then, you know, they start running out of money and then they realise that they have to go home. So it's really encouraging and inspiring, of course, for people who would want to do something like that. It, it's a great, you know, that's a great achievement that you pretty much it all fell into place within that first week. And, and hanging out with some Brazilians and music, oh, my gosh, it just would have been like sangria and and Latin music every night. Oh, amazing. It was honestly, it was awesome. I, I, I was really lucky that I found them because, like, they're all still such good friends and, like, I think that really set me up um, in Sydney. That's really cool. Really, really cool. Uh, if you could go back to your younger self, what advice would you would you tell yourself? Um, I think there's a few key things. There's there's firstly, like I put I've always put so much pressure on myself to like achieve highly. And I think like whilst I was at school, I I was like, gotta gotta get good grades. And because of that, I didn't put as much time into music because I was like, oh, like I've got to get these grades to go to this university and study this subject even though that wasn't really what I wanted to do but I felt just a lot of pressure from myself that that I need for some reason that was what I needed to do um and so if I could like go back and give myself some advice I'd be like look like music is what you love music is your plan a put your time and your effort into music have a plan b but don't prioritize your plan b because of course plan a is not going to work out if you're prioritizing Mm. plan b did you feel in those early days that your music was kind of the plan B? So there wasn't any, um, you know, support thinking that that could even be uh, a possibility? I think it was always something that I wanted. I think, yeah, I think I didn't ever see it as really a realistic option. But I think I, I think once I left school, 
I kind of just got to the point where I was like, this is, you know, it's cheesy, but you know, this is my only life. I'm going to regret not giving this everything. And I think ultimately as well, just knowing that everything's always going to be okay. Like you're always going to find a way to make money. You're always going to have friends around you. Like, you know, everything's always going to be fine. So it's okay to take, to live a little risk to achieve something that matters a lot to you. No, but that's incredible because so many people actually have the other mindset, which is, I have to go with plan B because it's my security. You know, I have to do the right, you know, I have to do right by what what we're taught in school is, you know, get that good nine to five job because then you're going to have security. But you went against the grain and went, oh, well, that's boring. I, you know, I can do that when I'm older if it doesn't work out. Let's go live a little and let's move halfway all the way over the other side of the world, which is incredible. People don't, People don't live out of the box. It takes people a lot of, um, you know, inner power to make that decision and go, no, I'm leaving it all behind and I'm going to go adventure. So congratulations on that. That is a massive feat for sure. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, I think always risks are always worth taking. And I think also just remembering that you can always change plan if you need to, like if something's not working out, then you can change. Like I've got so many friends that are in their mid twenties and they've just literally like a weird amount in the last year have just been like, Nope, I want to do something else now. And they've, they're studying a different subject or, you know, they're just, they've changed career path and it's always there as an option. Like I I think people don't need to stress as much about having to just make a choice and stick to it for the rest of their life. I love it. That's so good. And it's so great hearing it from, um, you know, a younger spirit because it is it is what, you know, it is what people need to hear because, yeah, like we said, you can just get stuck in the mundane and that's really cool that you've got friends at home who are like, nah, stuff it. I'm going to do what I really wanted to do. That's really cool. Well, Jess, you know what? This has been really, really great. Um, it's been really great to hear, um, you know, your story on how, moving to Australia and and you know the busking scene for you is so much more of your passion and what you can give because that is inspiring for you know young artists out there who feel like they have to go do the cover scene to get exposure or to get experience like that's really encouraging as well so I wish you all the best with your next endeavors and the next season for you um we'll make sure that I pop on the comments below all your feeds for your music and your Instagram and all that kind of stuff and yeah it's been a pleasure to to speak with you today so thank you so much yeah thank you so much it was really lovely talking to you Well, thanks again for tuning in to Lady Red Live with my special guest, Jess Josie Lee. I hope you've been inspired and are feeling more encouraged. And for more information on any of my guests, head to my Instagram at Lady Red Live or my Facebook page, Lady Red Entertainment. So until next time, stay safe, be blessed. This is Lady Red Live.